Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a paranormal horror film, Adorados. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a red-haired housewife curiously looking down at her kitchen sink. For a moment, she just stares at the bubbles, then presses her ear closer to the drain. She then opens the faucet and lets it run. Her husband, Juan, arrives a while later. He's excitedly chattering about the dog they ran over yesterday, turning out to be alive. He then sees that she hasn't cooked dinner yet. But he doesn't mind this time and just suggests that they order some food instead. But the wife tells him that the reason she couldn't cook was that she heard voices through the kitchen sink drain. So he checks the pipes himself, but hears nothing. The husband then reasons that maybe she just heard the clattering of the old pipes or their neighbor Walter fixing things in his apartment. But the wife is adamant that she heard human voices through the pipes and that they were discussing their plans to kill her. Later that night, the wife gets out of bed to go to the restroom. Her husband wakes up a few seconds later and hears thudding through the wall they share with their neighbor. He bangs on it and shouts that it's too early to be doing construction work. But the noise does not stop, so he goes next door to talk to their neighbor. Juan presses the intercom to ask Walter to stop banging on the wall, but just hears a strange static noise coming from the device. He goes back to their apartment and realizes that the thudding sound isn't coming from Walter's house, but actually from inside the bathroom. He steps inside, and the first thing he sees are smears of blood on the wall. To his horror, he sees his wife levitating, and an unseen force banging her body from wall to wall. She is now unconscious, with blood pouring from her head. Juan tries to stop her body, but it just goes on and on, until she is a piece of dead meat. Eventually, the authorities are called, and Juan is taken to the police station, where he gives his statement. He tells them that his wife died of a paranormal occurrence, but his story just sounds far-fetched to the police. Later on, he is visited by three paranormal investigators, Jano, Mora, and Rosentok. Unlike the cops, they believe every word of what he is saying and are interested to know more about what happened to his wife and the strange happenings in their neighborhood for the past two weeks. They show him pictures of the exact same death that happened in the United States in 1998, and it's further evidence that his wife's death was paranormal. Juan begins his story with an accident that occurred outside his house. His neighbor Walter had started renovating his house at strange times, and it was extremely noisy. It turns out that the three investigators are familiar with Walter. He had first reached out to Mora after months of strange otherworldly activity inside his house. He couldn't take it anymore, so he begged her to give him some answers. Walter hadn't been sleeping because of the terrifying things that happened every night. He first started noticing that something or someone kept moving his bed, and his other furniture was also rearranged. He could feel a malignant presence, and he ducked under his covers to hide, but he never saw a glimpse of who was doing it. He went to other specialists, but they all recommended Mora, who was experienced in all things paranormal. But when he tried to book an appointment, her secretary replied that she is too busy, and she doesn't take on cases with no physical proof. Desperate for answers, Walter bought a camera to record the paranormal activity. Meanwhile, his neighbor Juan complained of the loud banging every night, and Walter just lied and said that he was doing some renovations. That night, he laid in bed and turned on the camera. Hours later, he woke up when he heard the camera fall into the floor and a static noise coming from it. Walter played back the tape and saw a tall and naked humanoid figure emerge from under his bed, watch him while he's sleeping, then enter the closet nearby. It closed the closet door, causing the camera to fall and waking Walter up. The creature was still inside the closet, and Walter scrambled for his gun and pointed it at the closet. He then opened it, but found nothing. Mystified, he closed the door and played the tape again. Behind him, the door opened once again, and the humanoid creature slowly crept out. Walter could see it through the reflection on the metal barrel of his gun. The creature touched him, and he screamed in horror. What's more, it's also revealed that Walter was involved in the accident that happened in front of Juan's house. The woman neighbor who lived in front of their houses, Alicia, had a young son. The boy ventured inside Walter's property to drink from his outdoor tap, but Walter shooed him away from his bedroom window. He told the boy never to go near his house again for his own good. Walter had good intentions of protecting the boy from the creature residing in the house, but the boy got scared, hurriedly left the property, and stepped into the middle of the road. He did not notice the bus, and it hit the boy, killing him instantly. Right at that time, Juan had been repairing the cracks in the wall. He heard the accident outside. Upon recognizing the boy as Alicia's son, he immediately called help for her. Juan and his wife did their best to support Alicia during this difficult time, while Walter stayed inside his house and didn't attend the funeral, possibly because he's kept trapped by his guilt and fear. In the middle of night, police commissioner contacted the paranormal investigator Jono and told him about the boy's strange death and the even stranger event after his death. A few days after her son's burial, Alicia heard some scuffling sounds on her doorstep. 
She looked out the window, and saw muddy footprints leading to her door, and a shadow of a young boy. Commissioner sent a police car to pick Jono up. When he got to Alicia's house, Commissioner was already waiting for him along with a couple of police officers, who were visibly spooked. Inside, Alicia is in shock, and stammering that her dead son had come back to life, and returned to her home. The boy walked inside, and left muddy footprints. Then he sat at the table, and she had even prepared cereal and milk for him. The boy was still sitting at the same spot when Jono entered the kitchen. The police reported that they saw him move. That's why they were afraid. This perplexing resurrection finally led Commissioner to call his old acquaintance, Jono, to help investigate. Jono approached the frozen corpse sitting at the table. He remarked that it did smell like a rotting body, and Commissioner asked him if it was possible that Alicia's grief pushed her to do this. Jono disagreed, and said that the boy's fingers were torn, probably from scratching at his coffin in the dirt, in order to emerge from his grave. But just to be sure, Jono recommended that they check Alicia's clothes, to see if there is evidence that she was the one who dug up her son. He asked Commissioner if he knew Alicia's character, and Commissioner revealed that they were actually lovers for a few years. Suddenly, the glass of milk on the table fell over and spilled. The two instinctively guessed that it was the corpse, who moved and pushed the glass. Jono suggested that they lie on the official report, and say that the accumulation of post-mortem gases caused the corpse to move, since sticking with the truth could possibly land Alicia in a mental institution. The two planned on dosing her with a sedative, and then taking the body out of the house to be buried again. When morning came, Jono left the house, and saw more outside Walter's house taking pictures. He recognized her as a fellow paranormal investigator, and asked her what she was doing. Mora had received the tape recordings from Walter, and decided to take on his case. However, when she arrived, he was no longer there, and the house was empty. She also added that whenever she would press the intercom, it seemed like someone was picking up from the other end, but nothing except static could be heard. Jono quickly realized that there might be a connection between what happened to Walter and Alicia's son, so he introduced her to Commissioner. Commissioner then talks to Jono privately, and tells him that since it's now morning, they can't move the body of the boy anymore, since many people will see. Furthermore, Commissioner will be retiring from his job next month because of his failing health, so he can't afford to have this case put a blemish on his good record. He is wary of Mora knowing too much, but Jono assures him that she knows what she's doing. Jono then tells him that he should still bury the body again, and he and Mora will stay behind to take care of Alicia. Meanwhile, Mora takes some pictures of the muddy handprints on the front door. She remarks that not only are the prints on the doorstep, but there are footprints on the wall too, indicating that the boy had also walked up the wall. Jono takes her inside, and she examines everything, including the boy's corpse on the table. The two then sit down in the living room, and Jono shares with her how he became a paranormal investigator. He worked for years as a coroner until one day, corpses started waking up and speaking to him. In turn, Moore also tells him about Walter's predicament and the tapes he sent. While they are talking, a neighbor kid sneaks inside the house and sees the boy's corpse. The corpse's head turns, and the neighbor kid drops his school bag and runs screaming. To prevent further sightings, Jono wraps the corpse in a cloth and stows the body inside a freezer. However, they don't notice that the neighbor kid is filming them with his phone. Right then, Commissioner hears the boy screaming, and a loud thud echoes from the freezer. That's how all of these events led the three paranormal investigators to Juan in the present day. They believe that something supernatural is happening in the neighborhood, and they ask permission to stay at his house for a few days, and investigate the paranormal activity. Juan agrees, and the three investigators each take a separate house to stay in. Rosentock and Commissioner are in Walter's house, Jono in Alicia's, and Mora in Juan's. Later, Rosentock shines a UV light in Walter's bathroom, and sees strange symbols illuminated on the wall. In the kitchen, they see the utensils sticking out of the bottom of the cabinets. Meanwhile, Jono hears the voice mail from the mother of the neighbor kid. She is very disturbed by the video recorded by her son, and is eager to talk to Alicia about it. Back in Walter's house, one of the hanging utensils suddenly slices through Rosentock's hand. Something inside the cabinet starts sucking the blood from the wound, and Commissioner whips out his gun. Rosentock manages to extricate his hand, and the two go to the living room. He excitedly calls Mora, and informs her that Walter's house is the nest of the paranormal activities. He also instructs Commissioner to wipe all traces of blood left behind. Commissioner is spooked by the things he is seeing, and he calls Jono to tell him that he's leaving, because he can't take it any longer. But Jono says that he is seeing someone in Walter's front window, that is not Commissioner or Rosentock. Commissioner looks around the house, but there's no one there. Jono looks closer, and it's the same humanoid creature that Walter had caught in his camera. He blinks, and then suddenly, the creature is in front of the window, and it attacks him. Meanwhile, Rosentock has made a discovery. In the dark spaces under Walter's bed are two humanoid creatures. 
He gleefully smiles, while Commissioner runs out of the door. In Juan's house, Mora is inspecting the large crack on the wall, shared by him and Walter. Rosentock calls her, and tells her about the discovery. She is pleased, and answers that she did think what Rosentock had long been looking for, was in Walter's house. Commissioner later goes to Alicia's house to look for Jano. He sees that the front window is shattered, and he hears a high-pitched noise, coming from a cabinet door. He opens it, and sees Jano asking for his help, and saying that there's glass in his eyes. Mora speaks into the crack on the wall, and looks for Walter. She sees a being that looks like him, but has glowing eyes. But Commissioner appears, and tells her about Jano being locked in the cabinet. Mora replies that what he saw may not have been real. She adds that he should clean his hands, since the blood can attract the creatures. Mora also tries to call Rosentock to call off the investigation, since it's become dangerous. But he does not reply. She then explains to Commissioner her theory about everything that is happening. The humanoid creatures come from another dimension that coexists with ours, but cannot be seen by our eyes. They can only be visible, when observed in a certain way. These creatures use the tap water to travel to our dimension, and wreak havoc here. That's why Avon's wife was hearing voices from the faucet, and how Walter drank from the tap water, and now appears to have transformed into a creature as well. They can also use the bodies of humans. But Mora still does not know what exactly the creatures are, and why they've been killing people. Suddenly, something from the wall grabs Mora, and Commissioner is overwhelmed by the shock, and he crumples to the floor. Right then, a large creature who appears to have burned skin, begins to emerge from the wall. Meanwhile, Rosentock is still in Walter's house, investigating the phenomena. The door behind him slowly opens, and he starts to turn around. Disoriented, Commissioner tries to reach Mora, but the furniture is moved by an unseen force. In his weak state, he crawls toward a cabinet, and sees the burnt creature about to catch him from on top of the cabinet. But he blinks, and the creature is gone. Instead, it is Alicia. She is mad at him for making people believe that she is crazy, and for burying her son again. He explains that he only did it for her, and then begs her to take him to the hospital, because he's having a heart attack. Alicia gets into her car, and Commissioner follows. He stops short, when he sees that her son's corpse has been unearthed, and is now in the backseat. Commissioner recoils in horror, and gets into his own car instead. Just as he is about to drive away, Mora comes running out of the house. Her spine is broken, and her body twisted in a horrifying way. She tells him that he needs to save them, because they are being tortured. Commissioner drives as fast as he can, and stops the vehicle in a secluded place. One of the policemen under him contacts his radio, and informs him that they are in Alicia's house with her. The cop could also see Jono in front of the house. Commissioner tells them to get out of there, and the cop obeys. Commissioner then has a change of mind. He races back to the neighborhood, and douses Alicia's house with gasoline to burn it and the creatures. He sees Alicia's dead body in the living room. She had hanged herself. After finishing, he goes to the front steps. Suddenly, Jono appears with his eyes gouged out, and Commissioner quickly brandishes his gun, and shoots to set the whole place on fire. A year passes. Three people visit Juan at the psychiatric facility where he is held. There are two policemen, one of whom used to work under Commissioner, and had witnessed him setting the houses on fire. The third person is a doctor. The other policeman shows Juan pictures of the Commissioner and the three paranormal investigators, telling him that Commissioner is now a fugitive on the run, after being implicated in the house fires that killed the people inside. He is also being implicated in Juan's wife's death. But Juan doesn't really answer them, because he is distracted by someone at the back of the room. He tells them that there's another man who came with them, and he resembles a burnt Rosentock. However, the other men don't see what he's seeing, and the movie ends with a chair from the back of the room flying toward them, propelled by an unseen force. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.